blasphemy and of course heresy, apostasy, enmity against God, these are always portrayed so negatively and always from the perspective of the religious. Blasphemy, uh, it, it's the religious point of view that is always the default in society. And it's therefore, when we talk about it, at best it's seen to be offensive and hurtful, you know, all those fragile sensibilities out there, poor things. And at worst, of course, it's a danger to national security, that's what it's considered, to morality, to the stability of the state and by extension society, to be stamped out by any means necessary. From our perspective though, from the perspective of free thinkers and dissenters, it is a cause for celebration, particularly the celebration of blasphemous women at the center of change. I know that the history of blasphemy is considered to be predominantly male, but I would argue that it is female. Because being a woman in and of itself is an act of blasphemy. Our body, our hair, our eyes, our voice, our sexuality. It's a deviant form of man before we even think and speak. Not individuals in our own right, but extensions of male guardians and honor. A deviant form of man to be rectified only by ensuring silence, obedience, submission through mass violence, not seen and not heard. Much of women's blasphemy has been and continues to be erased and made invisible. Just take, for example, the witch hunts of the 15th to 17th century in Europe, where thousands of women were burnt at the stake. Many were killed because they refused to submit to patriarchal controls. Until the 18th century in Europe, countless others were put in skulls bridles. It was an iron muzzle that enclosed the head was slid into the mouth and pressed down on the tongue, often with a spike, so as to cause immense pain to scare and intimidate women into submission. I would say it's a metal version of the hijab and borga. Yeah. Sylvia Federici in her book, Witches, Witch Hunting and Women says, witch hunts were legally approved, religiously sanctioned, mass assaults on women's bodies. Women's crimes were exaggerated to justify horrendous punishments as effective means to terrorize society, isolate victims, and discourage resistance. Used to control female sexuality, which was seen as a social threat, needing to be repressed into acceptable female social behavior. Doesn't this all sound so familiar? How many women? have been similarly killed, shunned, erased, imprisoned, persecuted, silenced, on a mass scale by the Islamists as we speak, by the Christian right, by the Jewish right, by the Hindu right, by the Buddhist right, for the crime of being a woman. And yet, still we rise. Blasphemous women have been at the forefront of challenging the established order, and the sacred subverting the status quo, often at great personal risk. At Celebrating Descent Oslo, we honor them and we celebrate blasphemy, which has throughout history been a catalyst for change.